Hey, it's Alabama Annie with another episode of Stories and Songs for you. Today I'm going to read you a tale uh, from my extensive library of short stories I've written. This one is entitled Wendell Wells Old Ford. And it's a pretty interesting story and at the end of it, being that it's, it's about an old uh, car and all, we're going to hear a song by the legendary Johnny Shines entitled Cool Driver. I'm going to play that for you. Wendell Wells Old Ford Everyone in town knew Wendell Wells as the grumpy old man who lived way back off the main road in a run-down trailer with a herd of goats, a bunch of chickens, an assortment of stray dogs, and a very mean one-eyed tomcat. Wendell had lived in the old trailer ever since his release from prison in 1970 after serving 25 years for his conviction of armed robbery of the First National Bank in Jackson, Mississippi. But all that while, Wells argued he hadn't robbed that bank, that he'd not been anywhere near Jackson that day, but he had no witnesses to speak for himself, so he did his time. When he was in prison, the authorities hounded him as to the location of the money he claimed he hadn't stolen. And long after his release from prison, the retired FBI agent who had been on the case since day one still kept an eye on Wendell, living only a few miles away from him in a nearby town, looking for any signs of Wendell spending money, perhaps buying a new car or a better trailer, but Wells never showed a sign of any excessive spending or broke from his routine that he'd followed since his release from prison. But John Page watched him just the same. He'd park on the road near Wendell's trailer sometimes, looking through his binoculars, waiting for that big break that would finally close the books on that case. He knew about everything Wendell Wells did. He knew Wendell was on the public dole and had been since he was released from prison, that he bought his food at the local Piggly Wiggly with food stamps, and once a week he bought a case of cheap beer and a carton of Chesterfields at the corner store near his house. Driving everywhere in his old 1948 Ford. He wore the same ragged plaid jacket and worn out boots everywhere he went. When Paige got word that Wendell Wells had died one night in his sleep inside the trailer after a neighbor noticed he hadn't been into town for a while and went over and found him, she would called the sheriff. The sheriff called Paige and together they went to investigate the scene. They removed Wendell's body from the chair where he died and hauled him off to the Pike's funeral home and there was a service for him and a few friends came to his gravesite including Paige but there was no family present because, as far as anyone knew, Wendell had none. Page told the sheriff his suspicions about the bank money, and they searched that old trailer from end to end just in case it might have been hidden there. But nothing was found save $20 in Wendell's wallet. The trailer was hauled away. All his dogs, goats, and chickens, and the mean one-eyed tomcat were taken in by neighbors, and a junk man came to haul away all the trash Wendell had collected over the years as Paige continued to search through most everything. They searched the rundown barn out back of Wendell's trailer where he parked his 48 Ford but found nothing. And Paige gave the Ford a good going over too before a local mechanic came to haul it away to his garage. And John Page told himself to forget about Wendell and the missing money that he needed to close the books on the case, reasoning that if the old man had been telling the truth, maybe they did convict the wrong man for bank robbery. He sure hadn't lived like he had any extra cash. Page reasoned that if Wells had stolen the money, why, why the hell would he have lived in squalor like that all those years? You have to wonder. John Page moved on. He put it out of his mind as best he could, until a couple of months after Wells died. He had come through town after a trip to the local hardware and happened to see Wells' old 48 Ford at the garage all spiffed up with a for sale sign on it. 
He stopped his car and studied it for a few moments before pulling into the garage parking lot. He'd always liked that old truck and he needed a new project anyway. He bought it from the, from the mechanic for $500 and had it hauled off to his house and thought he would restore it. The project might take a lot of time and time was all he had since he was retiring anyway. He pulled the old Ford into his barn and set up a light to see in the work area and got out all of his tools and each afternoon he'd pop a cold bear and set to work. He sanded and primed the body for a new paint job and tuned up the engine. He rebuilt the carburetor and changed the oil. He had the old engine purring like a kitten in no time. He began work on the interior of the Ford. He pulled the back seat to reupholster that cleaning out a rat's nest or two and noticed that the floor was filthy with chicken poop and rat droppings, so he began pulling up the flooring itself. The flooring ripped and slung debris everywhere when it came up and he coughed and he sneezed. But that's when he saw the money. Under the ratty old flooring of the 48 Ford, there were wrapped stacks of 20s and 50s and 100s from the First National Bank of Jackson, Mississippi. As John's heart raced, he removed the stacks of money and counted it, aside from three bills that he'd found pieces of in the debris that the rats had chewed. It was all there, all $75,000 of it. As he stood staring at the money, he thought, all those years of questioning Wendell and watching him, for any indication of his spending money, he'd never come out with a single clue that Wendell actually had that money. It was clear to him that Wells had never spent a dime of it. He'd served his time knowing all that money was stashed in that old Ford inside his barn. Had he planned to save it for something, or was it possible Wendell Wells simply forgot where he had hidden the cash? John Page guessed he'd never really know. He went inside to make a call. I need you to send someone out to my place, he told his former supervisor. I've just solved the case of Wendell Wells and the missing money. Yes, that's right. I found the bank money. John Page could finally close the books on the only case he hadn't been able to solve in his 41 years of duty. He kept that old Ford until the day he died. So, there we have the story. You know, things can be deceiving sometimes. Looks can be deceiving. And you just never know about somebody. I'm sure there's someone in your neighborhood that is a little strange or a little different. And you have to wonder, are they sitting on a million dollars? You know, did they rob a bank? I don't know. But here's a tune Johnny Shines wrote. It's called Cool Driver. Yeah.
Johnny Shine's cool driver. Have a good one.